special guest on the show with us now. We talked with him back when the schedule came out about this week, this game, and he's joining us right now. Uh, one of the most popular players in recent Bills history. Four seasons here, a Bills draft pick in 2010, then went on to play four more with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He hosts the Steelers Nation Radio and the Arthur Motes Experience podcast in Pittsburgh, the author of a new book, The uh, Motes Theory of Life, available at MotesTheory.com. Happy to have former Bills linebacker Arthur Motes on the line with us. Hello, Arthur. John Murphy and Steve up here in Buffalo. Thanks for coming on. Hey, man, I'm glad to be here. Always great seeing you guys and talking with you all as well. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, well, I'll talk to you about the book in a minute, but one of the things that the book reminded me was how much you embedded you were in just four short years. You really were a, a popular and really an active Buffalo Bill and in this community as well, weren't you? Yeah, yes, indeed, man. Um, I learned early on from George Wilson and Bri uh, Brian Scott that while I'm there, I need to make an impact off the field. Don't just focus on the on-field stuff, but make sure you're impacting these communities because the people there are going to appreciate you so much more for that stuff than anything you've ever done on the field. And really, that's what your book is about. It's, it's so much, it's more the lessons you've learned rather than the plays that you made as a football player. And, and for guys, most guys, like you, me, most of the guys who played, it really is a journey to get to the NFL just to get on a team, let alone have a nice career like you did. And some of the lessons you learn along the way really translate to every aspect into everybody's life. And that's what you're really translating here in the book, correct? Absolutely. Um, I think that kind of like what you said, man, in terms of our personal experiences that we acquire along the way, we can use all those things to help us be more impactful, more inspirational. And the reason why I wanted to make, uh, to make my book more of a self-help and inspirational style book versus autobiography. I felt that all athletes, or a lot of athletes, once they retire, they write the autobiography. And once you read it once, it, it you don't need to pick it up again. There's nothing you're gonna grow and learn from it. Whereas with this style of book, this self-help self style book, this is something that you could pick up today and read, you're gonna learn something. You could pick it up six months from now, you're gonna still grow and learn from it. And that's ultimately what I wanted to do. Uh, Arthur Motes, our guest, his book is The Motes Theory of Life. And I, I opened it up to the page that I was looking at last night, highlighted it. As you just said, this is not a biography, really, an autobiography. So you want to open people up to the greatness that resides in them. What do you have in mind there, Arthur? Yeah, man. So I feel that people are naturally awesome. And a lot of times their life experiences, sometimes their circumstances will put a damper on that and will make them think that they aren't worth what they truly are or they can't accomplish things that they truly are capable of accomplishing. So for me, when I wrote this book, I wanted to make sure that I let them know some of my uh, some of my things that I felt were holding me back at times or hindering me to let them know that you can still overcome these type of obstacles all these doubters and all these other various variables and still achieve great things. Yeah, and one of the things about this book is it benefit, all the proceeds benefit the Marine Corps Heritage Foundation as it preserves the history and traditions and culture of the Marine Corps. Your dad, Arthur Motes, uh, Arthur Nathan Motes III, or you selected well, that's me. your dad, He's Arthur junior. Nathan. Yeah. Your, yeah, your dad, your junior. You selected that because he was a Marine for like 13 years, a big part of his life, and a lot of these lessons have to do with the things he learned as a soldier and, and passed on to you. Yeah, absolutely, man. When, when we talk about the core values of the Marine Corps and just the mentality that's associated with those Marines, those were qualities that my father passed along to me daily. It was so many life lessons, whether it applied to me in sports, me in the classroom, once I got older, me in relationships as well. All of the qualities that he had instilled in me at an early age have paid a, I've had a massive impact on my life to get me to where I am now. With Arthur Motes, his book is The Motes Theory of Life. And as we mentioned, it's not an autobiography, Arthur, but you do tell the story of how in your senior year at James Madison down in Virginia, you were kind of surprised to learn that you might be drafted, right? Tell us that story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I talk about how coming out of college, uh, Mel Kuyper, he does his pre-draft boards and everything like that. And I'm finding out my name is on one of his boards in terms of me being a guy that should get selected. And I talk about how the whole draft day happened for me where I'm sitting, waiting on this phone call with my family, have some of the local media there, and I'm not getting a phone call and these rounds just going by. But then I tell about how the Giants first called me and they're excited and I'm getting excited. And then from there, it's the Falcons that are calling as well. And the whole time, Buddy Nix, he's trying to call my phone to let me know I'm drafted. 
but they couldn't get it. He couldn't get it into my phone, so he ends up Don't calling my it. mother's phone, <laughs> and she takes the call from Buddy Nicks, and they're finding out that I'm getting drafted before I even can. And it was just an awesome experience for me, though, man. Just getting on that phone and and hearing Buddy Nicks telling me, man, I'm gonna be a Buffalo Bill, seeing my name go across that screen, man. It was just something that I would never forget. Yeah, it was a good four years here in Buffalo. You went on to the Pittsburgh Steelers, ended up in Arizona. Now you make your home in Pittsburgh. You've been watching this Steelers team. They got off to a slow start, stumbling start, Ben Roethlisberger sideline. They've kind of found it and put it together. Tell us about what you see with this edition of the Steelers, with uh, Duck Hodges uh, taking snaps. Uh, what do you see in this game coming up Sunday night? Yeah, man, so this Steelers team – in a lot of ways are very similar to how the Bills have had to win, man, in terms of having an elite level defense. Now, granted, with the Bills, they've had Josh Allen, who's a, a far better quarterback, but in Pittsburgh, man, they've had to get very creative with how they score points on offense. This is the technically fourth quarterback because they started out with Ben Roethlisberger, who got hurt six quarters into the season. Then it went to Mason Rudolph, but Josh Dobbs was the third quarterback going into the season, and they traded him away to Jacksonville. So they cut, uh, they end up releasing uh, Duck Hodges coming out of camp and then bring him back. So from then on, he takes over midway through the season and has provided a spark for those guys offensively. And defensively, they've been thriving on turnovers. So it's been a roller coaster ride all season from starting out one and four to winning seven of the last eight games. But I think that's what makes this matchup versus uh, the Bills so intriguing to come Sunday because the Bills are a team that has been good all season but hasn't had the type of national respect or haven't been talked about in that regard up until the Thanksgiving game, which you saw them put on that beautiful display versus the Cowboys. Yeah. So now you're starting to see two teams that have that history, two teams that have been playing real, and ultimately going to see who gets it done in primetime, man, because it's major playoff ramifications on the line, too. Arthur Mozart, guest, former Bills, former Steelers linebacker. Arthur, um, you played for Mike Tomlin there in Pittsburgh, and I will confess I never – I didn't have negative uh, thoughts about Mike Tomlin. I just didn't think much of him, even with the Super Bowl win. Mm -hmm. But this year has impressed me. And what has he done this year to keep that group going and together without Roethlisberger, without Antonio Brown, without Le'Veon Bell? How has Mike Tam Tomlin managed to keep that group going and have him challenging for a playoff spot? Yeah, man, I think the biggest thing with Coach Tomlin, and you're not the only one who may have thought that he didn't do much because even in Pittsburgh, sometimes the conversation was he's only one with Bill Cowers players or he's only had success because he's had a Hall of Fame quarterback his whole tenure. But I think this year when you strip away all of the offensive assets that he's been accustomed to having. When you go into hostile environments, you're winning with Mason Rudolph, who struggled mightily in his time here. When you win games with Duck Hodges, who was, like I said, a street free agent. I mean, just the combination of them finding ways to get it done offensively and them having an elite level defense, which is his specialty. I think those are the reasons why he's being viewed differently this season and why he's getting the, the acknowledgement this season. Because a lot of times when you have the piece that he's had with a Ben Roethlisberger, with the Le'Veon Bell, with Antonio Brown, sometimes it's easy to overlook or you, you make excuses in terms of how a person's being successful. And I think that's what he was experiencing early on. Well, like you say, when you've, you've got a ro rotating carousel at quarterback like the Steelers had for a few weeks, and, and now they've kind of settled on Hodges, I guess, but, and they're mm -hmm. kind of settling in. They've won eight out of their last ten, and they're doing it with the other side of the football. Their defense is elite. And it starts with really, for me, their defensive ends and Minka Fitzpatrick in the back end. Let's first talk about the front end, the, the front seven. Those guys are really getting after it. Yeah, without a doubt. It starts with uh, T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree. Obviously, T.J. sitting at 12 and a half sacks, Bud has nine and a half sacks. When you have two guys like those who can just get after the quarterback and set the tone early on, they provide the wave that the defense rides. And with Bud, he was the question mark coming into the season in terms of him having the ability, but his productivity wasn't matching up. Well, now this year, you're seeing him put it all together. And the addition of Minka Fitzpatrick has been nothing short of amazing. The amount of turnovers, the amount of splash plays he's been able to provide, ultimately having a guy to just white out any mistake that may be made by the guys in front of him, that's special. And I think that's why this defense has been playing at such a high level. What's it going to be like there, uh, Arthur? You played here in Buffalo, some great home crowds. Now you got Heinz Field. You played there as well. They, you know, they're going to blast Renegade by sticks as the fourth quarter begins. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's 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 similar to the atmosphere that uh, Bills fans create here in Buffalo, isn't it? 
Absolutely. I always tell people I was very fortunate to be able to play in front of two just insane fan bases. It's rare because spending that last year in Arizona, it's nothing like that. But when you talk about these fan bases, when you talk about putting them in a prime time game with major plus implications, it's going to be a very memorable experience, not only for the people in stadium, but the people that are watching it on TV. This is going to be something that you don't want to miss. And I'm just glad to say that I was a part of both of these organizations because they're very storied. They're very, you know, respectable in terms of the history of their organizations. But when you put these two together with the fan bases, Bills Mafia, Steeler Nation, it's going to be a sight to see. Yeah, to this week the Steelers are going to get a shot in the arm. It looks like Juju Smith-Schuster and James Conner are going to get back in the, into the lineup. Um, hard to win games without those guys, but you've been getting it done, and now they're getting a boost. This could be just in time for the Steelers to really – kick it in gear and push toward the postseason. That's got to be their mindset. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, James Conner has been, you know, trying to come back and practice over the past couple of weeks, but he had a shoulder injury and he had a setback when he played against the, the Browns on the Thursday night game. So he was pretty cautious going into these past couple of weeks with Juju. He's a similar situation coming back from a knee injury. So it's still up in the air in terms of what their full availability will be. But having those guys come back is definitely going to help out an offense that needs all the help it can get. And like you said, when you're talking about playoff implications, you look at the wild card seedings right now. I mean, these are the two teams, Buffalo and Pittsburgh. They've pretty much put a, a, a lock on those. And we're basically trying to figure out who's going to be what seed going forward. But I think that that's just a testament to both organizations, both coaching staffs. I mean, obviously, Sean McDermott has done a phenomenal job turning around the Bills and getting them to where they are right now. But it's going to be an exciting game come Sunday night. Arthur, do you uh, dare making predictions on Steelers Nation Radio or the Arthur Motes Experience podcast? And if so, who do you got in this game? Who do you like? Oh, man. See, this is the one week where I'm, like, not even trying to go down that path of making <laughs> predictions. because. <laughs> You're torn. I get because it. I tell people, I tell people all the time. I'm like, I, I, I pick Buffalo anytime they're playing somebody, except the Steelers, and I pick the Steelers every time they're playing somebody, except when it's Buffalo. I don't, I don't like this matchup at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe like I got one more question about the book for you. And again, I didn't finish it. I started it. But uh, what the early chapter, chapter M, make happiness mm -hmm. a priority. Tell me what your theory is there, Arthur. Yeah, so when I talk about making happiness a priority, so many times in life, people will do something to please somebody else. Whether you're staying in a relationship because you want to make the other person happy, you're staying at this job because it makes this person happy, but all the time you're putting your own happiness on the back burner. And I tell people that you can't continue to live like that no matter who you're trying to please because ultimately you're going to burn yourself out and you're going to, you're going to self-destruct. And I talk about some of my personal experiences and how I was doing that a little bit and how it hurt me. But I want in that chapter people to learn from my mistakes and learn from my shortcomings in that regard. So that way that if they are in a similar situation or going down a similar path, they can overcome their obstacles and get better at that. You said you set out to write an inspirational book, and, and I think you've succeeded, Arthur. Tell us uh, how our listeners and viewers can and get a hold of this book, The Moat's Theory of Life. Yeah, man, I definitely appreciate you, man. Um, if you want to purchase the book, it's at motestheory.com. So literally just M-O-A-T-S theory.com. And yeah, we also have a holiday bundle packages. So that way, if you want to get the book before Christmas, it makes a great Christmas gift stock and stuff where that's available. And these are the paperbacks. And then we also have the hardbacks that will be releasing uh, after the new year. Well, Arthur, making happiness a priority is, is going to be something we're happy you're on the show. We appreciate it. It's great talking to you, man. Maybe we'll get a chance to cross paths soon. Yeah, man, I definitely appreciate you guys having me on, and always go Bills. All right. <laughs> Don't let them hear you say that down there on the Steelers Nation podcast. <laughs> Arthur Motes, our guest, uh, former Bills linebacker, former Steelers linebacker. His book, again, is The Motes Theory of Life, available at motestheory.com. And we thank Arthur for uh, joining us uh, Always a good guy. Always a big smile on his face. Thanks, Arthur.